unboxing, speed test, trail test, range test, comparison to the XR, comparison to using public scooters, and overall review, all of which we're going over right now. Hey, welcome back. Today we got our hands on a brand new one wheel pint. Now I've had the XR over there in the corner for a couple months. I put over 1000 kilometers on it. I absolutely love it. And to be honest, it's basically replaced my car. However, there has been a few occasions where I thought to myself, should I have just got the pint and saved a bunch of money? And today I can finally answer that question and share my thoughts on it with you guys. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this thing, push its performance to the absolute limits right out of the box here on day one. Then we'll go do some basic riding and I can give you my honest feedback so this way, if if you're thinking about getting one, this should help. And I'll also compare my experience with the Pioneer to that of the XR. So if you are debating that big upgrade, then hopefully this will help answer any questions that you might have about that too. But nonetheless, first thing is first, let's get this out of the box. And also, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thanks for being here. I like to design, build, and test things, etc. So if you're into that stuff, then do stay tuned. But let's get into it. Okay, so initial impressions, number one, wow, like the quality of this thing is 10 out of 10. It's like a modern day spaceship for a skateboard. It looks and it feels super durable and the unboxing is like unboxing an Apple product or something of similar caliber. You can tell it's just an expensive product that's really well made. But more than that, the first thing that I noticed is how small it is and how much less it weighs than the XR, which I really, really do like because the XR is huge and it's heavy and it's just very bulky. This is a really nice change in size and weight. And additionally, the aesthetic of this is definitely better it's more of a modern design and honestly it's pretty slick so let's get this thing fully charged and then let's immediately just ride the battery till it hits zero so that we can test the range on a brand new battery but before that and quickly the first thing that I'm gonna do is install a set of bearing seals now these just keep out dirt and debris from the bearing and the motor hub here but I highly highly recommend getting these if you are getting a pint especially if you're able to put one on before you even ride it it'll help keep your pint running forever they're linked below but lastly let's just take a moment of silence because this is probably the last time this board is actually gonna look this clean and scratch free. Okay, so the first test that we did was indeed the range test. You can see that the lifetime odometer there is at zero. This was indeed the first ride on the brand new board and my first time ever riding a pint. Now, also shout out to Anthony for helping film that day. He was filming while on his XR to help us with some of the comparative testing. So here's a typical daily commute on the pint. First thing is first for me is the post office. Part of my work involves going there daily, but nonetheless, we met around 9th Street here in Calgary and went to the closest post office, which was only about 800 meters away. Now at the post office, you'll notice that when I stop, I slow down here and then I begin leaning backwards and the tail end of the board comes down to the ground. That is a feature that only the pint has. On the XR, you have to lift up the heel of your front foot of the board for it to actually stop. And I do really wish that the XR had this simple stop feature like the pint does. It's super convenient and it works every time. After the post office, mandatory coffee and off to Milano's here in Calgary. Some of the best coffee in town. This was only about 550 meters away. So we'll add that to our range test that's ongoing there. And at this point, I was really noticing the small tire and profile of the pint. With that small tire, you can really carve around and make sharp turns. Whereas with the big Vega tire on the XR that comes stock, it's really just not nearly as nimble. And having this small board with the small tire was definitely a lot of fun. And honestly, yes, I'm gonna say it, it was more fun uh, inner city riding on the one wheel pint than it was with the XR. However, you can indeed change tires on the XR to a smaller one to get that same feeling. But basically, all in all, city riding with the pint was extremely fun. Now, coming up to Milano, as you can see, I went down this curb here and did a bit of a nose drag, which uh, would have been super sketchy if I wasn't used to riding a one wheel already. Often when that happens, it can lead to a face plant, which is never good. So definitely do be careful with that. And also the taxi in this video looks a little bit closer than it actually was. Uh, I was not being that reckless. So after that, heading to deliver another package to the one and only Yan Hoot. If you're in Calgary, check out his shop. 
hands down the best almond croissant in town. However, during that commute here is when I really realized the limitations of the pint, which started with the top end speed. So being in the bike lane and kind of just pressing it full speed, I really noticed the pushback that I was getting, which is basically when the front end of the board starts bringing the nose up, telling you that you're kind of going too fast and that you should slow down. It was basically doing this the whole time. Now the top end speed of the pint is advertised at 16 miles per hour, but around that uh, probably 13 to 14 mile per hour range, the board does indeed start telling you to slow down. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still plenty fast, but it is worth noting that coming from the one wheel XR onto the one wheel pint, it was indeed a change that I would personally have to get used to. The one other thing that I really noticed is that with that smaller tire and the lighter board, you do feel the bumps a lot more. And it sounds like I'm being super picky, but living here in Calgary where our roads and even the bike lanes are not really in the best shape, it does make a difference. However, after dropping off the package at Yans, we headed towards East Village, which is now another 2.8 kilometers or two miles away. Again, this is all on that fresh battery from the odometer reading of zero. The ride here was a little bit uneventful, but nonetheless, upon arriving, I still had lots of battery left, which here's another feature that the XR doesn't have. The Pine has the LEDs in the front that show you the battery life. Again, it's a small, useful feature that I wish the XR had, but this is a range test after all. So we just continued on past East Village and into Inglewood, and I basically rode it all the way out until I was stuck doing a couple laps around a brewery. And then finally the battery came completely dead and the board gave up. The total distance that it went was exactly 13 kilometers or just over eight miles, which is exactly what they advertise online. So I was really happy to see that. It was also a decent amount of stop and start riding. It was moderately aggressive and there was lots of full speed riding. So that is a pretty darn good distance. And that concludes the range test and the first ride uh, on the one wheel pint. Now, continuing on, after having a real pint, it was time to test a few more things about the one wheel, starting with a little speed test against the XR. Now, this was a test against Anthony's board, which has some modifications. So it's not a 100% true stock test, but basically the pint was faster to start and then the XR quickly caught up and blew by. Now we also did a full speed test on the pine before getting major pushback. And this was consistently happening at 22 to 23 kilometers per hour, which is about 14 miles per hour. And that pretty much concludes the speed test. Now you can push the board past that speed, but you will uh, really run the risk of doing a huge nosedive as it would be quite tough to recover at that point and at that speed. So overall, if you're trying to go really fast, really you have to get the XR, but that's not really the purpose of a one wheel anyway. So I wouldn't say that a top speed test is overly important. Let's keep going. So moving on, on the way back, we dove into Princess Island Park to do a little bit of trail riding. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised with the pint. It has the same 750 watt motor as the XR. So it's pretty powerful and it performed extremely well comparatively to the XR. It was arguably maybe even a tad more fun with that smaller board and the smaller tire. But the issue would be is if you left your house just to go ride a bunch of trails, you might find yourself with a little bit of range anxiety if you are on the pine. Whereas if you're on the XR, you have that 12 to 18 mile range, which is plenty. Overall though, trail experience for the first day and first run on the pine, honestly, super impressed. It's definitely not advertised as being meant for trails by uh, Future Motion and by One Wheel. That's probably because they want you to buy the XR with that purpose in mind. But nonetheless, it did surprise me. It does pretty well on the trail. So next, I wanted to compare the pint to using the public scooters that are everywhere because if you are someone who uses these for commuting, it's worth considering basically how many scooter rides does it take to pay for a one wheel pint. So on my phone, I have the Bird app and I'll use this one to compare costs, but you can do the same math with all the different scooter companies. This will be in Canadian dollars and kilometers. However, if you are in the the US or you're using miles, don't worry because the number of days of using a public scooter that it takes to pay back the cost of the pint will be the same regardless of your currency or miles versus kilometers. So it's $1.15 to start a public scooter ride here and then it's 35 cents per minute of use. So let's just assume that we're going an average speed of 18 kilometers an hour and let's say that the daily commute distance is about 2.5 kilometers, which if you're downtown seems pretty reasonable, at least here in Calgary. So with those numbers, each trip will cost you exactly 
$4.07, which is actually not nearly as cheap as I thought. If you're using them for daily commuting twice a day, that's $8.14. Uh, and then if we take the total cost in Canadian dollars of the one wheel, which was 1,500, and we divide 1,500 by 8.14, that gives us 184 days of daily commuting on one of those public scooters to equal the cost of the pint, which is basically half of a year. So take that for what you want. Now it's obviously not an exact number. There are some variables in there, but it is definitely Definitely a good reference point if you're using it as a uh, cost analysis for purchasing one of these over using something like a public scooter. This could also be done with a bus pass, a train pass, etc. So in summary, all in all, I'm super impressed with the Pint, especially for the price point. Basically, if you don't plan on doing really long commutes or lots of trail riding, this thing is perfect. If you're just commuting to and from work around downtown, uh, in your neighborhood to get groceries around campus, etc., it is a great option and the portability of it is really, really nice. That being said, if price doesn't matter to you at all, yes, I would definitely get an XR, but I almost double the price. It really just does depend what you plan on using it for. Personally, from the start, if I had gotten the Pine, I'd be completely happy with it right now, no regrets. However, after using the XR for a while, yes, the Pint does feel a little bit slow and I'll probably have to throw the charger in my backpack when I'm out and about with it. But other than that, for half the price, basically, you can't really go wrong. And lastly, I will notice that there is a huge uh, marketplace for used one wheels. These things hold their value really well. So if you did go ahead and grab a Pint, there would always be that option in the future to uh, perhaps sell your Pint and upgrade to an XR. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, uh, please consider subscribing drop any questions that you might have or any comments at all. Let me know your opinion, let me know your thoughts, and that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.